Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Portal Keeper Hassabel on Normal and Heroic in Antorus the Burning Throne. Yes, this encounter takes place on four platforms, one main one in which you'll actually be fighting the boss, and three others that are around the edges of the room. You'll need to send groups of players to these side platforms throughout the fight by using the coloured portals in front of them as dangerous mini bosses spawn on them and they need to be killed. Now before we talk about these platforms, let's talk about Portal Keeper herself. She'll frequently debuff tanks with Reality Tear. This is a 30 second dot which explodes when it expires, dealing a burst of damage to the raid per stack of the debuff. You'll want to taunt off each other around 3 stacks to keep the explosion damage to a minimum. Throughout the fight she'll also spawn Fellstorm barrage lines. Three of these will appear one after another on Heroic, and you'll only have a single one on Normal. After a few moments they'll explode, dealing a burst of damage and knocking back anyone who was caught within them. The entire raid needs to move out of these, especially if you're towards the edge of the room, as the knockback can knock you completely off the platform to your death, which is hilarious, but isn't good. Another one of her abilities is Collapsing World. When she casts this, it causes a very large circle to appear directly underneath her. After 8 seconds, this circle will explode, dealing a burst of damage to the raid and a near lethal amount to anyone that stood within it. The tank should try and position the boss so she's at the side of the room when this ability is cast. Ranged players should be loosely stacked in a group roughly 30 yards away from the boss when this ability is cast, so they don't have to move from the circle at all and they can simply just keep DPSing the boss. The boss will also be spawning adds when she casts her transport portal. This small portal will always spawn near the boss and will spit out some imps and then despawn. These imps will cast Fiery Detonation on Heroic. This cast deals a massive amount of raid-wide damage while also leaving a debuff that increases the damage you take from this ability for 6 seconds. It's vital that these are interrupted because if you have multiple casts over and over again, you're definitely going to wipe. In terms of interrupting these imps, it's super easy to do so because almost all forms of CC work on them and they also have a very small amount of health. So as soon as they spawn, all DPS should swap to them and just use all the CC you have and nuke them down. Now there are two different ways you can position the boss to deal with the adds. One way is you can make it so she's always up against the wall, only moving each time a collapsing world comes in. This will help keep the imps a little bit more grouped up, whilst allowing ranged DPS to cleave off the boss onto the imps. The only problem with this strategy is that the imps can spawn within the collapsing world, which means that melee DPS can't attack them. So the second way of doing it is that you can drag the boss to the range group in between each collapsing world. This will allow melee DPS to always be able to attack the adds, regardless of whether a collapsing world cast is done or not. This also ensures that the majority of the raid will be in range of healers when Fellstorm Barrage comes in, as no matter how you dodge the beams, you'll not be on the opposite side of the room. Both of these strategies work fine, you might want to try both of them depending on your DPS composition. Now that's all the Portal Keeper does, but you still need to deal with the mini bosses that spawn on the other platforms around the room. Whilst the mini boss is alive, the people on the main platform will be taking ever increasing ticking damage, so it's important that these mini bosses are killed quickly. You must form a group to go and deal with each and every mini boss that spawns throughout the fight. When making your group, keep in mind that you cannot send every single player as otherwise the portal keeper will just go absolutely nuts and wipe you really really quickly. You'll need to send one tank. The tank should taunt switch before going up to make sure that neither tank gains super high stacks of reality tear. You only need to send a single healer. You want the majority of your healers to stay downstairs as there is a lot to heal whilst there's nothing really going on upstairs. You may want to assign a single healing cooldown or two on the main platform just to counteract this high ticking damage that is going on every time a group goes up onto the platform. And finally, you want to send the majority of your DPS up, around two thirds of your total DPS players. The third of the DPS that remain downstairs should consist of really strong cleave and AoE players, just to make sure that any of the adds are dealt with cleanly. Now the first mini boss will spawn on the fire platform when Portal Keeper reaches 90% health. The group of players going up need to run into the fire portal and then engage the mini boss which is Volcanar, making sure that the tank grabs threat first. Now this mini boss has two casts that you need to interrupt. Flames of Zoroth will just deal a pulse of damage and leave a dot on nearby players, and Unstable Portal will deal a ton of damage to everyone in the raid, as well as buff the boss. You need to interrupt both of these casts, but the mini boss cannot be CC'd, so you need to assign interrupts to make sure that none of these go through. On top of this there will be supernova zones on the ground that you need to move out of, otherwise you're going to be knocked up and take a bunch of damage. Now you may also notice that there are fire orbs on this platform, you can completely ignore these on normal and heroic. They allow you to see through fog of war on a later platform, but intended or not, you do not need that ability to deal with the mini boss. Once you killed Volcanar, all players should return to the main platform and just continue the fight as normal. Just make sure that when you're returning to the main platform, do not land inside a Fellstorm barrage line, otherwise it's very likely you're going to die. The next mini boss spawns on the green platform when Portal Keeper reaches 60% health. 
You want to send the same group of players to go upstairs and deal with her, although you may wish to send an additional healer, as the healing requirement up here is a little bit higher. The healers that remain downstairs will once again want to use a healing cooldown or two, just to survive the incoming damage while the new miniboss is active. On this platform, all players want to stand directly underneath the miniboss to counter her two abilities. The boss will cast Fell Silk Wrap on one of the DPS. This deals a burst of damage to them and wraps them in a web that will stun them and deal ticking damage until it is removed. DPS need to swap to this web to remove it as soon as possible. By being stacked underneath the mini boss, this allows for a lot of passive cleave. These webs should get destroyed very quickly. The boss will also apply a debuff to everyone on the platform, which deals 10% of current HP damage to them every tick until it expires. As this debuff always does percent current health damage, the damage alone from this debuff will never kill anyone, however when comboed with just normal melee hits on the tank, as well as the damage from the fell silk wrap, people can very easily be comboed, so it's vital that you keep players around half health just to keep it safe. This mini boss will also cast Unstable Portal after being alive for 45 seconds, so make sure you interrupt it, however you should be able to kill her well before this point. Once she's dead, return to the main platform, and the fight continues from there. Now just as the green platform miniboss spawns, Portal Keeper will now begin to summon spiders as well as imps when she casts a transport portal. These spiders will cast Acidic Web, which will root someone for 5 seconds, which obviously isn't good when you have collapsing world circles to move from, as well as Fellstorm barrage lines. It's vital that you interrupt these guys, as well as CC them just like you did with the imps. Now the final mini boss will spawn on the purple platform once Portal Keeper reaches 30% health. You want to send the same team of players up on this platform as you've done for the previous ones. Now this platform is surrounded by mind fog darkness that prevents you from targeting anything far away. Because of this you need to have the entire group stack up underneath the boss while she kill him off. You can counter this fog by standing next to a fire orb that you've dragged over from the fire platform. This will allow you to see further and target things like usual, however this provides absolutely zero benefit as long as everyone stacks completely underneath the mini boss. Now this mini boss will deal a burst of damage to anyone within 20 yards whilst giving you a small damage taken increase. Healers just need to heal up this damage whilst focusing on the tank as they can get a bit battered by the boss during this time. The mini boss will also apply a debuff to the healers on the platform called Delusions. This 10 minute debuff reduces the healing you do by 100% whilst giving you mana back every second. The healer wants to hold on to this until they do need to heal again, at which point they should dispel the debuff and get straight back into healing. Any healers on the main platform that has run out of mana because they've just been reckless with it might want to quickly pop up onto the shadow platform to gain this debuff before returning to the main platform once again. The raid downstairs of course during this time will be taking a large amount of damage whilst this last mini boss is active, so any remaining healing cooldowns you have should be used whilst he's alive. Once this mini boss is dead, have everyone return to the platform and begin to finish off Portal Keeper. Now the transport portal cast is empowered once again when the shadow mini boss spawns. On top of imps and spiders you'll now get little dogs that will cast howling shadows. This deals a big burst of damage and interrupts anyone within 60 yards, so just like the imps and spiders, you want to interrupt, CC and kill the dogs before they get out of hand. And apart from that, after that shadow portal has been finished and everyone does return to the main platform, you simply just need to finish off the boss while all three portals are doing moderate ticking damage to the raid. There's no need for any healing cooldowns or anything like that from this point, just don't get hit by any of the other abilities. But that's all we got time for. If you'd like to know more about this encounter or have some written material for you to refer to during your raid, check out our guides over on Wowhead. The link for that is in the description. And thank you very much for watching, guys. If this guide did help you out, do drop us down a like. It helps us out also. But if you'd like to help us out even more and go that extra mile, feel free to support us over on Patreon. A huge thank you to all of our supporters over there. You guys are absolutely awesome. You really do keep us going. And we shall see you all in the next guide. Thanks for watching.